In order to have a good start of a game of Warcraft 3, you better get good at managing your creeps and your creep routes. When do you creep? When do you interrupt your opponent's creeping instead? In this guide, we're going to be delving into the importance of creeping, how you plan your route, the importance of manipulating creep AI, discovering who does creeping best, and why creeping or harassing an opponent instead may be better in certain situations. All of these points are closely related, and we're gonna be breaking down each of them below. First things first, creeping importance. What do you actually gain from creeping? For this section, we will ignore the interactions with an opponent. For a base understanding, taking down neutral monsters, aka creeps, on the map is called creeping. The benefits are experience. Experience leads to hero level ups, which is capped at level five from creeping per hero. Gold. Gold is granted for every creep that you kill, rewarding a player more richly the higher level the creep is. Items. Items will grant bonuses to the heroes carrying them, or they can be sold for more gold. And finally, removing guards. Clearing a creep camp that is guarding an important feature of the map, like a gold mine, for an expansion opportunity. Or maybe a mercenary camp to hire mercenaries. A laboratory to enlist specialist goblin mercenaries, like the zeppelin or the goblin sappers. Or a healing fountain to offer percentage-based healing for all nearby standing units. And then of course there are the goblin merchants, or the shop, uh, and a marketplace to buy or sell items at. Depending on your specific game plan, you may choose to prioritize creeping for experience, uh, creeping for gold, creeping for particular items, high level ones for instance, or to remove guards. Fast expansion strategies will clear a gold mine as quickly as possible, whereas orcish blade masters are often on the hunt for good items, and undead is usually seeking to get the quickest, highest hero levels. Gold Gold gain is always a modest secondary bonus to whatever you're doing, and that may be often overlooked, but is not unimportant. Let's talk about some best practices for creeping. Because creeping follows a set of efficiency rules that dictates the optimal creep route that a player can take. This is influenced by the type and the amount of units that a player has, as well as the hero choice that they make. Creep routes that are good typically have shorter travel distances between creep camps rather than long distances. And best practices for fast creeping include reducing the travel time between creep camps that a player is taking, taking the most important or the biggest creep camp that you can for your current army strength. After all, if you are at a high value camp for a longer period of time and you're able to handle it, that means that in this time you are not traveling. So your creeping efficiency, as it were, is higher than going from a small camp to another small camp while fielding a giant army. And try to take as little damage as possible to reduce healing times and to also be safer and more resilient, dealing as much damage as possible. For instance, by focusing on the damage versus armor type bonuses. For example, normal damage dealing damage to creeps that have medium armor, giving you that bonus damage advantage. And manipulating the creep AI to achieve all of the other points above as well. More on that later. Let's take the example of Concealed Hill. It would make sense to start with the 342 Ogre and Troll camp, as it is the nearest to your main base, and it gives you good value, level 1.8 on your starting hero, as well as a solid item such as the Circlet of Nobility claws, gloves or the ring, purely based on efficiency and not considering your opponent in this situation, the next logical creep camp would be the 242 turtles on the opposite side of your main base. And then the 354 goblin shop camp, finally topping it off with the 1232 crab camp. This would give you two permanent items, a utility consumable, a tome, level 3 on your hero, and you spend as little time traveling as possible between all of these camps due to their proximity. Warcraft 3 has four races, so the question is, creeping, specifically in the early game, who does it best? Some races are faster or more efficient at creeping, whereas other races are better at harassment. Likewise, some heroes excel at harassment, whereas others excel at creeping. Travel time is an important consideration for both creep routes, as well as harassing an opponent's creep routes, and some camps are worth disrupting more than others. 
years. Our last guide, the expansion guide, explained when to expand. And you'll remember that expanding is something that humans do the most, followed by elves, then undeads, and finally orcs, who do it least frequently. This is an important factor to keep in mind when you're making the decision, do I let someone do their own thing? or do I mess with them? An unstopped human creep route can quickly turn into an insurmountable advantage by th them throwing up an expansion very rapidly. An unstopped orcs early game creep route does usually not pose the same threat for an opponent. So with that, the question is, time is on whose side? One important question to always ask is, if we both do our own thing without interacting with one another, who's that better for? If the answer is me, then the focus will be on my creeping speed, uh, efficiency, my safety, as well as scouting to see whether I can continue to be doing my own thing without being interrupted. If the answer is them, time is on their side, my game plan is going to revolve around scouting, harassment, disruption, and focusing on other advantages in the game, like maybe the speed with which I'm teching towards new technology trees to get other units and so on. While there are exceptions with special hero choices or certain strategies, uh, typically the racial matchup determines who needs to be focusing on creeping and who will attempt to disrupt the opponent's creeping. Let's look at each one per race. Human. Probably the best early to mid game creeping race is human. They can creep very quickly thanks to militia. Militia have the same DPS as a footman, while being on a limited duration before turning back into peasants. This does come at a price. Peasants fighting as militia are, naturally, uh, not mining lumber. This will slow down the human's tech. For example, they will upgrade their main building to a keep, aka tier 2, uh, less quickly. But by sacrificing one advantage, the human can accelerate their creeping and try to turn the gold that they gain from it, the hero levels, and the items and the tactical advantage into another advantage. Examples of this uh, would be dealing significant and lasting damage to an opponent with the rapid level 3 hero that you may have gotten. Maybe you can be cancelling enemy buildings because of this, killing things. Because of the way militia work, the active threat radius that human can affect with their militia is typically limited to their own half of the map because militia expire. Human also has slow moving units that don't get speed RS. So, human is typically incentivized for these reasons to stay on their own side of the map, creep a lot and build defensive advantages. Other races typically need to harass a human to stay on even footing in the game. Night Elf Night Elf typically leverages Ancients of War to tank damage and heal for mostly free via eating trees, since uprooted Ancients of War draw creep aggro. This will help a Night Elf for both speed, as Ancients of War deal damage, as well as efficiency and safety. Building more than one Ancient of War can set up a path of mass creeping that can be nearly as fast as a human's creeping. Summons are another way for Elf to increase their creeping speed and safety. Beastmaster, Tinker, Firelord and especially Keeper of the Grove have all been historic popular starting heroes for a Night Elf so that they can create a tank via their summons that will both absorb hits and deal damage and protect their mostly ranged early game armies. In Night Elf vs Human, the two races typically take turns in deciding who disrupts uh, whom. Elf usually will take the more aggressive role, whereas human will be taking the more defensive role, since human creeps a little faster and doesn't have the same harassing capabilities sometimes. Undead. Typically, Undead will use Rod of Necromancy with every starting hero to increase their creeping speed and reducing the damage taken. But it does cost them gold. A Death Knight can creep a few small camps exclusively with the Rod of Necromancy. And with no units helping them, get level 2 and then maybe go harass an opponent with level 1 Death Coil being a 100 damage last hit. Maybe steal some creeps for just 75 mana. This can kill either units or workers or kill their opponent's creeps. This is the predominant undead playstyle. They can, however, use units to creep, either after the Rod of Necromancy creeping or straight away. Here's how they typically choose to go about it. Early Crypt Fiend strategies. Going early for fiends slows down a lot of other important things that undeads do like to get from tier 3, such as Orb of Corruption, Destroyer Upgrade, and a third hero. However, fiends are a robust and strong tier 1 unit. 
opening for straight mass fiends has gone out of vogue a bit in one on one, but you may still see it against orc sometimes and in undead mirror, though typically never against elf or human, as the opponent would be out creeping you and then counter your fiends. However, it's still the best strategy for team play. Slower fiends after Rod of Necromancy creeping is the predominant meta play right now as of April 2020. You'll start with just Rod of Necromancy creeping and then slowly trickle in a few fiends while tacking up quickly. Undeads can also open with ghouls. They have two modes of play. The lumber gathering worker for undead is the ghoul, which is classified as both a worker and their designated tier 1 fighting unit. At tier 1, it is the weakest unit of all, but it still packs a decent punch in terms of DPS. Using them early as creeping units has an impact on the speed with which an undead can tech the tier 2 to their halls of the dead. As such, ghouls are often exclusively used for creeping when translating that advantage into an early expansion or an all-out rush. There is usually no such thing as a gradual game plan while using ghouls for creeping. You'll typically see the Dreadlord Fast Expansion or the DK Level 2 or DK Level 3 rush with ghouls after an undead chooses to open with ghoul creeping. Orc. Orc is fairly reactionary when it comes to creeping. That is to say, orcs are incentivized to disrupt an opponent from creeping too greedily. Either by using the Fireseer or the Blademaster, orcs typically try to keep an enemy hero from leveling up too rapidly. Although a Blademaster or a Fireseer level 3 can be dangerous, maybe as dangerous as an opponent's Archmage or Demon Hunter level 3, orcs don't usually manage to get their level 3 as quickly as their opponent, because they lack a creeping aid. So they may be attacked by a level 3 hero before they complete their own creeping. During this time, they're only level 2 and they may even have hurt units, so it could put them behind in various ways. Instead, orcs will typically try to freeze the hero levels at their own level 1 versus an enemy level 1, or their own level 1 versus an enemy level 2, so that at least the enemy doesn't get level 3. Or maybe orcs will get level 2, but then try to prevent an enemy level 3 or keep it there. Although they may be half a level or a level behind, orcs would rather that both players aren't creeping, since the opponent does it better. Unlike the other three races, Orc has no ways to speed up their own creeping, no Rod of Necromancy, no friendly Ancient of War to help out, and no Militia. There are some very niche tactics where Burrow creeping is employed, but it's very map dependent. As such, Orc needs to harass the most among all four races. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that I was able to give you an impression of how important good creeping can be. Next, we'll talk about what makes a good creep route and how to min-max to help to take your creeping to the next level. If you like this video, please subscribe and like. Thank you and thanks for watching.